Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are going to be taking a look back at some Halo Reach DLC maps. The reason being is because I, like many big Halo fans, have gone back to play Halo Reach and I have had an enjoyable experience for a few games. But there is a number one issue here that I want to stress. The issue I see is whenever I go back to play Halo Reach, I mainly get matched up with a group of people who always vote for a forged map. Not only is a forged map being chosen through majority rule, but you can only select between forged maps and some developed maps that were in the vanilla game of Halo Reach. I have yet to see a DLC map being voted on nowadays. The reason why this is an issue is because this is a main reason why many players that play Halo Reach are in matchmaking for only a few games, and then they'll switch to either another Halo game or a different game completely, or they would just log off of Xbox Live. So why are we not seeing these awesome, gorgeous Halo Reach DLC maps in the voting selection for Halo Reach? They are all free, and they have been free for well over a year now. We can come up with a couple reasons why we are not able to select these maps anymore. One might be, not everyone has downloaded them. Therefore, this falls on to the player's fault. If several people in a matchmaking lobby have not downloaded these now free maps, then the maps will not be considered in the voting process. It's the case that either everyone has the maps downloaded, but if there are like three or four people, then the maps are not even considered in the first place. I will stress, however, that the Halo Reach population is very low, so this dismissal of DLC maps makes the matchmaking process much quicker. A second reason could be, regardless if everyone has downloaded these free maps, they are just not put into the cycle to be voted on. Either way, the Halo community is missing out on not being able to play these awesome DLC maps and matchmaking. For anyone to enjoy these maps, they will have to invite friends into a custom game, or get very lucky in the voting process. I myself have been playing Halo Reach frequently, and I have yet to get lucky enough to vote on DLC maps within the past several years now. I feel that the memory of these DLC maps are being obscured in the minds of the Halo players that only got to enjoy these maps for a short time before Halo 4 was released. Despite the upset Halo 4 produced in the Halo community, many Halo fans still played and stayed on Halo 4. Therefore, these Halo Reach DLC maps lifeline was cut short. Many Halo Reach multiplayer levels, including vanilla maps and DLC, they've really become forgettable over time. This could be contributed to the fact that the vanilla multiplayer maps are blueprint copies that are also found in the campaign of Halo Reach, with of course variant weapon and vehicle spawns. It's predictable but factual that fewer people logged onto Halo Reach as time went by, just like with every other video game out there. But the Halo Reach DLC maps find themselves in this inherent rough contingency a rather unsettling turbulence when it comes down to player recognition. The ones who enjoyed Halo Reach as it was the day it was released may not have gone out and purchased the DLC maps when they were first available. They stuck with the vanilla maps and enjoyed their invasion game type chaos on maps such as Spire, Boneyard, and Invasion Slayer on Hemorrhage. Now that these beautiful DLC maps have become available for everyone for free, they unfortunately, they've been disregarded. These maps feel like a ghost in the shell. They're beautiful on the outside, but the relevance is vacant. And that really should not be the case. I really like this little nod to Halo Combat Evolved here on this map named High Noon in Halo Reach, one of the DLC maps. That little wall texture that you see there is a little reminiscent of Assault on the Control Room when you go into the large interior cave that you most likely take a scorpion or a warthog through. These Halo Reach DLC maps that you see in this video here were developed by certain affinity. I believe Halo Reach DLC maps have shown how much Halo has improved in its multiplayer maps by leaps and bounds with the enormous structures and the attractive looking colors. 
a lot of these maps here feel natural. In video games these days, I think that a lot of developers try to rely on the color palette of really rich orange and really dark rich blue. That's also to say with movies too. They look for ways to attract players with colors and, and that, but they don't necessarily gather that organic feel that I think is very apparent in these Halo Reach DLC maps. On this Halo Reach DLC map named Ridgeline, I truly feel like I am in some type of natural forest that has been conserved by the Forerunners. One of the developers for this map mentioned that they wanted players to have this sensation as if they were walking around Central Park in Manhattan. A thriving, vital, natural green conservation with two Forerunner structures on opposite sides marking the team's base. I really believe Certain Affinity nailed the atmosphere of this luscious green environment for this map named Ridgeline. The waterfall feels as if the map is active, and the overgrowth for Blue Base makes it feel as if nature can still take its course and overcome obstacles even if it's forerunner structures. Forge maps as of right now still cannot touch this type of beauty. This map named Solitary is a remake of Prisoner from Halo Combat Evolved, and walking around this map made me feel like I was confined to the cold and dry atmosphere that is represented perfectly in this map. Listen to this ghostly foley. What is ironic, however, is that this type of atmosphere for this map feels very much like the vacancy of all of the Halo Reach DLC maps, a downward spiral. It would take the attention of 343 Industries to get these maps back to the high point they were at. Condemned, the map you are seeing right now, I think is an interesting and unique take on making an indoor map feel large yet promote strategy with your team or as a lone wolf. You will find yourself ducking in and out of cover and traversing around objects that represent the Halo universe. All enough reasons why these Halo Reach DLC maps feel very good for Halo players because you're actually looking at something that might bring back that Halo feel. Maybe something we haven't really felt in Halo 5 multiplayer that much the detail in these objects and the sound. These little fine assets and attention to small detail is what makes players appreciate a map a lot more instead of going into another forge map with sound effects that have been heard numerous times in other forge maps. That's not to say that forge in of itself is a terrible thing because it's not. But when your maps are not given the attention to detail by artists that work on not only graphics but also gameplay and level design, well that's when you start getting people turned off from your game. Seeing something unique in each map is something that we've had before, but now it's sort of become a novelty. Letting video game artists develop a map from the ground up can promote so much more creativity and has so much more appreciation over time, rather than having an open canvas with a limited number of objects that cannot be changed in either way, that is regarding their geometry. Video game developers use dynamic software tools to create original terrain and structures, and in this case for the DLC map named Breakpoint, this structure you can't actually go up on, and Bungie sacrificed some gameplay for the visual look of this building that you attack mainly in invasion mode. That was an artist's choice. They wanted this building to be the one that you assault or defend. But why not implement a different looking structure instead of teasing players with this incline? All I know is that I remember this building from playing on it years ago. So maybe that's why. 
cosmetically, it's memorable. Highlands is my favorite Halo Reach map. When I played on this map, I felt immersed and excited with every path I went in. But now, it feels rather sad. It's bittersweet to walk around this map in custom game and remember when you took a certain route to steal the enemy's flag or snuck into their base through the caves to plant the bomb. This map is eager to get the Halo players back in their Warthog and Falcon, Banshee and Revenant, and house big team battle chaos. The feel of this map is undeniably Halo. The color of the grassy terrain and the fine sand, the tall, full-looking pine trees, and the abstract sky. This is Halo art in motion. So let us not overlook it. I believe that if more people download these maps that have been free for a while now, and if we finally see these DLC maps available to vote on, then Halo Reach can win back the hearts of those Halo players that have been saturated in Forge maps, that have had enough of lackluster Halo 5 Warzone maps that have recycled structures. Now don't get this confused. This channel is not about reacting to or rehashing Halo subjects that orbit around the idea of bring Bungie back or 343 ruined Halo. This channel is instead about focusing on what the community can do and expressing awesome concepts for the future of Halo games. Why not revitalize the longevity of Halo Reach? For much of its content has been left in the shadows, but boy, is this content beautiful.